We're now just over a week from the Obama sequester taking effect, or should I say the unleashing of that sequester. President Obama seemingly has his entire administration out in full force, forecasting horrifying events if his sequester isn't stopped and the president threatening and predicting disaster if the $85 billion in arbitrary spending cuts aren't prevented. We all respect this president as a man of intellect and immense political acumen. He's a man of many seasons and parts, but he's also a man of many threats. The president wants to raise more taxes just eight weeks after Congress agreed to higher taxes in order to reach agreement with Mr. Obama to avoid the so-called fiscal cliff. Now the president's out pushing the politics of fear, demanding his way or disaster. If sequester is unleashed, the military, he says, won't be ready if called upon. The White House says FBI agents will be furloughed, along with civilian federal employees. And federal prosecutors allegedly will just close cases and let criminals run free. Air traffic controllers and airport security to be furloughed, and thousands of teachers and educators and first responders all will be laid off. Now, that's quite a result to a phased-in 2% reduction in federal spending, particularly since the federal government has nothing to do with first responders teachers, or administrators. The Obama White House seems to want us to believe that the streets will be filled with both toddlers and crooks, airports will resemble ghost towns, and the federal government workforce will be reduced by about a third. Scary. Scary, except we've heard all of this before from our very own president. We heard it in the debt ceiling debate. We heard it in the run-up to the fiscal cliff. Remember this threat during the debt ceiling debate back in the summer of 2011? I cannot guarantee that those checks go out on August 3rd if we haven't resolved this issue because there may simply not be the money in the coffers to do it. This is not just a matter of Social Security checks. These are veterans checks. These are uh, folks on disability and their checks. Uh, there are about 70 million checks that go out. And more recently in the lame duck congressional session in the fiscal cliff debate, President Obama issued this threat. What's been holding us back is the dysfunction here in Washington. And if, you know, people start seeing that on January 1st, this problem still hasn't been solved. If they say that people's taxes have gone up, which means consumer spending is going to be depressed, uh, then obviously that's going to have an adverse uh, reaction in the markets. And of course, that's exactly what's transpired as we now approach the onset of sequester. It took a long time, but President Obama today finally reached out to the Republican leadership to talk sequester, talking by phone with Speaker Boehner and Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. Fox News Chief White House Correspondent Ed Henry has our report. With just eight days to go, President Obama placed calls today on the budget calamity to Speaker John Boehner and Senator Mitch McConnell. McConnell's office said it was the first time Mr. Obama called him since New Year's Eve as White House officials faced questions on whether the buck stops with the president. The president is commander in chief and he is very concerned and uh, that is why he has put forward uh, compromise proposals again and again. House Majority Leader Eric Cantor fired back the president should stop scaring the public about how meat at the grocery store will stop getting inspected and criminals will be let free by budget cuts and instead reach out to Senate Democratic Leader Harry Reid, who did not get a call from the president today, and push him to pass one of two House Republican plans to stop the sequester. Cantor declaring, quote, House Republicans have acted, and it's time for the president and Senate Democrats to join us. It's time to get off the campaign trail and get to work. Show us what spending reductions you prefer, and let's find some common ground. In the tit-for-tat fight, Carney brought out charts on the president's own plans to cut spending and tried to turn the blame game back on Republicans. There will be jobs on the line uh, if the sequester takes place, uh, and the president will, as he continues to do, uh, call on Republicans in Congress to uh, agree to avoid the sequester because it's a, 
it's a wholly unnecessary, uninflicted wound on the economy if it were to take place. Except there are others in the president's party, like former Democratic National Committee Chairman Howard Dean, suggesting the president should let the sequester happen to slice the Pentagon's budget. Dean telling the Huffington Post, quote, I'm in favor of the sequester. It is tough on things that I care about a lot, but the fact of the matter is you are not going to get another chance to cut the defense budget in the way that it needs to be cut. White House officials disagree, as does outgoing Defense Secretary Leon Panetta, who warned such deep cuts could leave America with a second-rate military. Now, you'll remember that Republicans were furious before the election when the White House was not complying with the WARN Act, which is a law that basically says employers need to warn employees about upcoming furloughs. Uh, the White House pushed back on all of that. Now they're releasing those furlough notices. Uh, but remember, people need, you know, 30 to 60 days in some cases on those notices, which means uh, these furloughs won't take place until late April, uh, even though uh, the sequester is supposed to take effect on March 1st, which means they're going to have to find other cuts to replace all of that since uh, the actual furlough notices were delayed, Lou. And thank you very much, Ed Henry, Fox News Chief White House Correspondent.